Welcome to Flemington, New Jersey, one of the most unique short track ovals anywhere in the country. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Joy. They've been racing here since 1916. Five years ago, this dirt oval was paved, and now they run asphalt modifieds on a weekly basis. They call this place the Squared Circle. And, Glenn Jarrett, you got to run some laps here in a super truck this afternoon. What's it like out there? I think I made a circled square out of it, Mike. Uh, we got in the... Uh, Chevrolet promo truck today and ran about 15 20 laps it is totally one of the most unique unusual racetracks I have ever driven on I never could find a straightaway if there's one out there uh, it certainly didn't show itself to me you're constantly in a turn you're turning all the time and you're on and off the accelerator it's unique it's fun there's a lot of room a lot of room for the guys to get under one another as they got under me and passed me on by but it should be a very exciting race you're out to the wall back to the inside back out to the wall this is going to be fun there are four different straightaways here and four very sharp corners, but you drive the track just like a circle. It'll be a unique challenge for our super truck drivers tonight under 80 degree skies and a beautiful evening for racing. Let's go to the starting grid, Randy Pemberton. Well, thanks, Mike. You would think experience would play a role in getting around this tight little tough racetrack, and it probably will on the pole in a Ford. It's Mac Tools for Joe Rutman. Joe, you got a lot of experience in race cars, now race trucks, but what about experience on a track like this? I have to admit it's a unique track. I've I've run a lot of racetracks and uh, it's it's a fun place, but it it uh, it'll get you in a heartbeat. There's no doubt about it. What about qualifying on the pole? How good is this truck? Ah, uh, we practiced real good, but didn't practice today real good. But uh, if we can get the handle back, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Okay. Good luck this evening. Like we said, Joe Rutman on the pole. Track record, of course, 19 two, three seconds for Rutman. On the outside of run, row one is Bill Sedgwick, a guy that is known for taking care of his equipment, but he put the muscle in it in qualifying. You got her up there to second. What about it here tonight? Can you win? Well, I'll tell you, this Spears team uh, really put a good Chevy pickup together for me here today. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of tough Chevy trucks behind me. It's going to be a 150-lap race. We'll see what we can do. Okay, good luck for you. Uh, well, his best finish so far this year is a second back in April at Bakersfield. Now let's go topside to Mike Joy and Glenn Jarrett, who will call the action this evening. Guys. Thanks, Randy. Packed house here at Flemington, New Jersey. This race has been sold out for weeks, and they're looking forward to super truck action. As I know you are, we'll be right back. Oh, it's special. Mike, all pro bumper to bumper, the auto parts specialist. And by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. They have fired engines here at Flemington, New Jersey. Here's tonight's starting lineup brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. On the pole, Joe Rutman, 115 mile an hour lap in his Ford first pole of the year. Bill Sedgwick, former Winston West champ, starts right alongside. Ron Hornaday Jr., former Southwest Tour champion of NASCAR, and Scott Legacy, the former SCCA road race champ, qualifies fourth. The high plains drifter Rick Corelli, another Southwest Tour champion, and Jack Sprague, he's in a Rick Hendrick truck starting tonight. That's row three. Row number four, Mike Skinner, who leads the league in victories, and Dennis Setzer in the only dodge in the field starts eighth. Ninth from the Northwest comes Toby Butler and the Southwest champ Steve Portengay. That's row number five. Mike Bliss in a Ford, and Sammy Swindell, whose arms are tired after flying in from Knoxville to run here tonight. He'll go back there for our live show late this evening in the sprint car. Row seven, Kenny Allen in number 65, and Dave Resendiz driving the Jeff Bodine Ford. Back in row number eight, John Nemechek with new sponsorship on his number 87 Chevy truck, and the winner at Denver, Butch Miller in a Ford. Row number nine, Michael Dawkins back in the series from Florida, and Bob Strait driving his own Chevrolet. In row number nine, Jerry Glanville driving his own Ford, and that's Bob Brevac's Ford, 20th. Mike Chase replaces P.J. Jones. Mike, the defending Winston West champion, he's in the diehard number one. And Jimmy Dick out of El Paso, Texas in his own Chevrolet. Row number 12, John Kinder, the youngster from California, and Frank Davis from the Legends Cars. He is now in a Ford truck. Finally, Kerry Teague, who spun on his qualifying lap and did not post a time. They are pushing Teague's truck through turn number two, trying to get him fired and get him rolling, and we'll be ready to go. You're going to ride along in the fastest pizza delivery truck in the world, Ron Hornaday in the Papa John's Chevrolet, Ron Hornaday Jr. There's a look over his shoulder. And out the back window, over the spoiler, and the bed cover. 
And looking straight ahead over the hood of Hornaday's number 16 as the sun glistens down on the asphalt here at Flemington. And you'll get an idea just how tough it is to get around here. There's uh, Ron Hornaday's dancing shoes. Got those Black Simpsons ready to go to work. Gas break, gas break, gas break. Mike Skinner, the GM Goodwrench service Chevrolet of Richard Childress. Skinner, who leads the league, getting set to go to work. Six victories. Phoenix, Portland, Odessa, or rather make that polls, Louisville, Milwaukee, and Indianapolis. And those are the views we'll show you from the Goodwrench Chevrolet. All right, Kerry Teague has coasted into the pit area. It's his first trip back since Topeka. Let's have a look at this racetrack. 1915 is when they built it. That is just about what it looks like from overhead. The track was paved in 1991 due to environmental concerns. Paul Cool, the promoter, decided to pave his racetrack rather than face regulation. Hey, Mike, it on dirt. Excuse me, Mike. You know, if I'd seen that diagram there before I went out, I might have made the race tonight. <laughs> Perhaps. One lap to go, and we'll go racing. It was kind of kind of fun seeing uh, Hornaday use the footwork there because that's I, I thought to myself when I first went out there, man, you got to keep one on the brake, one on the gas all the time. Well, the man who knows this place best sits alongside Doug Hoffman, has won four modified track championships and holds the track record here nearly three seconds a lap faster than the trucks qualified. What about getting around this circle? Well, you were talking about the brake pedal. Actually, this racetrack, when these guys get comfortable, probably won't use the brake at all. The only time they'll use the brake is if there's a wreck in front of them, and hopefully they'll have all front brake in it so the car, the truck will just go straight. Do you ever get the steering wheel completely straight here? Never. You put the car <laughs> in one position, and you keep it there all the way around, and a lot of times you'll put the gas pedal in one position, and it'll stay there all the way around. And this will be a true test of some of these guys' neck muscles. I hope they have headrests in or they'll be tired. So it's a momentum racetrack. It's a momentum racetrack, and the centrifugal force will get you. Let's get at it for the first 75 lap half of this 150 lap super truck event. It is Rutman on the brake. Hornaday inside makes the pass. Unbelievable. Ron Hornaday went right for it, dropped to the bottom, and he takes off. Looks like Joe's truck maybe pushed out a little bit there coming off that corner. He just didn't quite, couldn't stay in the gas like Hornaday did. Randy. Yeah, the deal is, guys, these tires are very, very hard here. Goodyear came with a tough, hard compound. Drivers told me before this race, it takes a long time to heat these things up. So be very careful on restarts and green flags. And that's probably exactly what happened to Joe Rutman. Car pushed up a little bit. Hornaday stuck it in there. Yeah, I don't think Ron was listening to that, uh, to that admonishment. Hornaday's taken off with the lead. Doug, I'm a little surprised that on most of this track, how low they're running, they don't really get all the way out to the wall. No, not really. And if, uh, you know, he got out front there, but if anybody's got a good handling race truck, they're going to get back up front. This is the type of racetrack where there's no single foul racing. If you've got a good truck, good handling race truck, you're going to get back to the front. Look at how short these straightaways are. That is the back stretch, folks, from two to three. And you just round it off into a circle. There's the short shoot from three to four. Sedgwick having a look inside Rutman. And that white number 76 Spears Manufacturing, 75 rather. Truck number 24 there, Scott Legacy. Of course, he's known for road racing, but that's on the gas, off the gas, on the brakes, on the brakes. This place was suited to him, his best qualifying effort of the year. Legacy started fourth in the DuPont number 24, Rick Corelli. Inside and turns Legacy right around. And Legacy gets into the fence and tests the styrofoam blocks here that line the corners at Flemington. Looks like he got just the end of the styrofoam and a lot of the steel arm go. Boy, that's a real shame. He had a real, real good run going. He was told me before the race he was just going to try to take it easy, maintain his position, not do anything wild or rash in the first half of the race. But uh, Corelli definitely got into it. Doug, tell us what these foam blocks, and you see just above the roof of that truck, there's some of the damage on the front. Well, Scott Legacy. How have the foam blocks changed racing here? This is such a fast racetrack, and being all turn, when you get in trouble, you usually end up being sent right out into the wall. And this was probably the best thing they came up with since they paved this racetrack. And it saved probably a lot of injuries and saved a lot of damage to some of the, you know, race trucks and the race cars. Uh, it's, uh, they need to do something. It's such a fast racetrack. 
Legacy is okay, and you saw the foam blocks that line the corners here at Flemington, New Jersey. So Legacy had his best start of the year, and it looks as if he has his worst finish. He is climbing out of the DuPont number 24 after contact with Rick Corelli. The Stevens Beal Genuine Car Parts 150 on TNN is brought to you by Goodyear, number one in tires. Scott Lagasse talking things over, the former SCCA road race champ, out of his truck after this incident. Watch, Watch Lagasse. 24. Watch Lagasse get into the corner there. Going into three, got just a little bit high. Corelli sneaks a look up under him. Then it looks like he's going to back out, but no, they touch. And uh, like Doug Hoffman told me while we were away there, you just can't touch here, can you, Doug? No, not at all. And uh, he started getting underneath them in that short street there. And then that fourth turn wall kind of comes out. So it didn't leave much room for either one of them different angle of the aftermath. You can see Legacy on the binders there trying to keep it off the wall, but it's so flat here, there's no banking to help slow the truck or to help turn the truck when it's in a spin there. Third angle. Yeah, he's already sideways there. Randy Pemberton is with Scott Legacy. Well, he's not thrilled, as you would imagine, Mike. Uh, Scott, what happened? Well, we got up off the bottom maybe just a little bit there between three and four. Um, by no means enough for Rick to get through, and I, I guess, you know, I thought it was a little early in the race to be doing that, but, you know, I'll see it on TV, and I'll, I'll make a judgment then, but, you know, the DuPont 24 truck was looking pretty good there. We got it around for qualifying, but uh, it's just no no sense in starting uh, starting a race at this this way, that early end. Too. Okay, tough break for you, Scott. Heartbreak for Scott Legacy here in New Jersey. It really is. It was his best start, and uh, turns out to be his worst finish of the year. And uh, Len, you're right. I think his road racing experience served him well in carrying momentum on this racetrack, not trying to overpower the racetrack in qualifying. He had a great lap. Well, also, uh, you know, Scott called me earlier this week, and he was talking about some of the things that have gone on during this year. And the conversation we had, he, he told me that, uh, you know, that we take a look at the top ten here. He told me that, you know, I'm just going to try to take it easy, uh, save the truck for the first half of the race, and it served him well in qualifying. You just can't get too aggressive on this place. And that's what he did. He had a good qualifying run. And like he said, he got up off the bottom just a little bit there, but uh, Corelli took a look and uh, decided to make his way through there. We're going to go racing this time. Ron Hornaday stole the lead from pole sitter Joe Rutman in the Mac Tools Ford, number 84. Ernie Irvin is here working with that crew. And we're getting set for the restart. Ten laps complete. They'll run 75 laps and then take the 10-minute halftime break. Good jump for Hornaday. Toby Butler had a look under Steve Horton game midfield of that ortho truck, but nothing there. That was a great spot. Here they come back around. From Hornaday's lead truck, the Chevrolet looking back at Joe Rutman's board, and he's putting a little distance on Rutman, who now starts to close. Boy, look at the Spears truck right up against Joe Rutman is Bill Sedgwick. Sedgwick loves a place like this. He's a very smooth, very non-aggressive driver. Oh, you oh. said? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, he'll run over you if you give him a chance. <laughs> Deja vu all over again. Oh, oh and wow. Mike Chase. That's Mike Chase. Went into the wall hard on the front straightaway. and really killed the left front corner of the number one truck. Not sure what happened to Chase. Hit one of the Jersey barriers here on the inside of the front straightaway, but it's almost as if the truck turned straight left. And when he hit that barrier, the truck jumped in the air and knocked down the left front tire. There is the barrier he hit right at the bottom of your screen. It, it did not move it. It was at that angle uh, to start with. Boy, Doug, you, uh, Doug, what is it about passing here that when you drop under somebody like that, as we'll see it here, either the truck coming down doesn't see